you know, at the very end, maybe exhausted. I guess. I I don't know how he. I don't know how he died into the force or whatever he did. I know J.J. Abrams set up the Force Awakens with. He was like setting up the pins in a bowling alley. He left so many stories for you to go such a good place. Who was her mother? Who was uh, Supreme Sn- Snoke? Snork? Snoke? Who was he? What was his story? Where did uh, how, how did all this stuff? It, and it, you could have went so many directions. And it and here's here's the deal. Now I'm going to get in my soapbox. Okay. Star Wars is always known for opening up with a small little story. You know what I'm talking about? Then it goes into the main story. Case in point, Star Wars, A New Hope. Starts with the big ships come by, the battle up in space, and then the droids land on the planet, and then the story starts getting the plans for the Death Star. Episode, uh, the next one, Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back. Starts with a little story, they're on Hoth. Boom, boom, boom. They save the reactor, blows up. They have to escape to get away. Story starts. We'll meet you at the rendezvous. Boom, boom, boom. They're chasing him. Return of the Jedi. Starts with a small story. Again, uh, they're saving Han Solo. Boom, boom, boom. Starts in the main story. And they do their swipes. You ever notice there's always swipes? Same thing. So we came out episode, what is it, uh, seven? We start with a small story. Boom, boom, boom. He needs to get the plans. Boom, boom. They crash the ship onto the planet. There you go. This new one started. They have to get up to the ship, and they're, it, it just started like a continuation. Should have given it some time. Like It should have been like a year or later or something later. And why tr- do you feel that it needed more time? Because that's that's how we were brought up with Star Wars. Star Wars always so had... you're big, saying the tradition The tradition. Not it, it shouldn't change. So for Epi- any of these. If you're going to do episode one, episode two, episode three, continue on the same way you're going. If you want to do it a different way... Do Rogue One, Rogue One, do solo movie. That's where all the spinoffs are for. But you should continue the tradition of continuing on. It just it just picked up from the last part, and it was just. Okay. But like you said, it made a lot of money. It did make a lot of money. How, there's so many questions. So if if it picked up exactly where they're entering the base, how did uh, all those fleets get there when they just blew up that big planet? I didn't he, make the movie. Okay, and he said to him at the end of the movie, bring bring, uh, bring Darth, uh, what's his name, Kylo Ren to me. I'm going to finish his training. He goes, yes, Supreme Snoke, yes. The, the, you know, that younger general. Mm-hmm. He didn't take him to him. He just His face is all healed up and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, they're there and it's working. You know what I mean? How did all this happen so fast? You got to give some time. Well, it was just... I just think you're just not happy. That I'm not happy at all. It. Am I, I mean, wrong? When I talk you... to you about like, well, what if he does the zombie Star Wars movie? Maybe you get a little bit more excited. I would get something, excited. Something but he'll... totally different Let's, and let... not traditional. Brandon, thing. I need you to blurt this out real fast, but he'll probably just... Thank you, Brandon. Thank you very much. That's what I'm scared about. All right, I, I'm done with my, my soapbox there. I, I'm sorry I ripped on Star Wars. On I know li- Disney. On high- Thank you for being one of our key sponsors <laughs> and, and giving hi- so many wonderful tickets because we uh, know big, you on, make some great movies. On, li- on lighter note, uh, the new Star Wars film with J.J. Abrams, which I have hope in him, which is going to end to the franchise of the Skywalker franchise. Skywalkers are done this one. It's the end of it. Um, opens up December 20th. So we'll see in theaters, see how it goes with there. All right. On other news, let's head to the D.C. side of the world. And I'm not talking about Daily City, and I'm not talking about Washington, D.C. I'm talking about D.C. Detective Comics. The Suicide Squad, you, of course, we talked before, is going forward. Suicide Squad 2, because they hired James Gunn to do it. And, of course, he's still going to be doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3, because Disney wanted him back, because they're afraid they're going to lose a great director. But the Suicide Squad, recent rumors were, and it was, like, all over the news, that Will Smith was getting pulled out of the movie, and... Uh, what is Idris Elba? I said that right? Idris Elba, yeah. Idris Elba was going to replace him for Deadshot. That's not true. Uh, Will Smith has uh, shooting con- uh, conflicts. He can't be in the movie. He's doing another movie. So uh, Deadshot's just not going to be in this movie. But Idris Elba is going to be portraying another DC, probably a villain in this. I don't know where they're going to go with it. Maybe they'll go with your guy, uh, Black Falcon. Vulcan. 
<laughs> you never Vulcan. know. No, he's a good no, guy. Now no, they allow Black Lightning. Yeah, he's very good. Oh, he's a good guy. No, he's emotionally go. a little bit unstable, but he's busy in his TV series right now. But the question is, is that with Will Smith, was it because of the work he was doing with Aladdin, which is coming out? No, I but don't think. But the thing is, is that how are they going to make sense of it since Deadshot is on contract with the with the government? How is he not available? Probably because they, they're, well, they're going to write something good. I don't know. Because, you know, but he wants to see his baby girl. And But this is what they're saying. This is not the original movie. This is a this is a different story. It's a reboot. So they don't like the original. One. Uh, well, it didn't. Get, Rotten Tomatoes didn't give it that good. They said I liked it. Uh, the villain wasn't the best. That was the problem. But I liked it because it was cool to see bad guys doing stuff. The villains, I liked all the villains. It's the story of why they're going in to do what they do was the worst thing. That's it. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No, I do. I do. Uh, it's just a thing. It's so just you're, but you're betting on James Gunn. I bet on it stronger James and better. Gunn is an amazing director. So is that what? So what's happening with the Harley Quinn movie? That's going forward. It's called Birds of Prey. They're both. It's filming right now. But it's is that done. coming out first? That's that, coming out first. Birds I, of Prey. I don't know the date of that one. Right. No, so I, Birds of Prey is what. That's the interesting thing. Is is that if they're going to reboot? Suicide Squad, how are they going to handle that with Birds of Prey? I don't think they're having more success in having all their movies separate. I don't think they're attaching movies to each other. Even though Harley Quinn... No, I don't think... I, I just think they I, they have more success being Wonder Woman, separate. Aquaman, separate. I hate to say this, but I'm giving you some love right now. Shazam, separate. They just do better by themselves. They make mentions of each other. But they seem to do better like that. Well, and the interesting thing is that Birds of Prey, they have some pretty key people. Like, did you know that Ewan McGuire is going to be playing Black Mask? Yes, And uh, Rosie Perez is going to be here as Renee Montoya. Uh, and then they also have a female director, Kathy Yan. So that's going to be really interesting coming out in 2020. All right. Well... Good, bad? You think it's going to be good? I think I'm going to be entertained. I'll be entertained. I have no faith in DC at all. I just, I never no, did. even with the latest reviews for no. the movies? No, Even no. with Wonder Woman 1984 coming out next They year? seem to be taking a long time with that. That's what scares me. And I don't think it means reshoots or whatever. What was the whatever. last movie that you said that about, but you were actually happy? They did reshoot after reshoot. Do you remember? No, I don't know. No? No. But I will say this. Margot Roby is amazing as Harley Quinn. Yeah, she does a good job. She She's a good actress. Yeah, right? She's really beautiful. I didn't realize she was that beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah. She's very like beautiful. Like, I, Tanya, she should have won an award. Mm-hmm. She's going to come a long way, baby. Mm-hmm. Let's get in a quick interview, Shannon Farnan. Uh, Another woman that's gone a long way, who's also been in the original um, Uncle. You should just see her... her her list of movies she's been in. Amazing. Hey, uh, let's talk to Shannon. Uh, the original Wonder Woman. Well, not the original, but the voice of the Wonder Woman for years for Super He's fun. our original Wonder yeah. Woman. Let's listen to her right now. All right, we're slating everything, and I want to make sure. Can you talk to me real fast? I want to get your... Yes, I'll talk to you real fast. This oh, is fast enough. Oh, my God. You sound beautiful. <laughs> I'm standing here with Shannon F- Farnan, and you are beautiful. Oh, how old are you? Did you just turn twenty nine? Just twenty nine? No, thirty nine. Twenty nine, right there. I want to get make sure I get you clear. Okay, good, good. You are incredibly <laughs> beautiful, actress, voiceover, connoisseur. You've done everything, <laughs> and everybody's here at this con to see you for Wonder Woman. But I'm not even interested in that. I'm interested in your movies and oh the TV my show. Gosh. You're on Dragnet. I was on. Dragnet. How was it working with Officer Friday? Is he? I heard he's a sweetheart. He is a very nice man. He normally, I love to tell this story because so many actors before I worked the show told me that well, you probably won't even yeah. talk to him much because usually when it's your close up and everything was in close ups yeah. in those days, you won't have any Jack Webb there to work with. Mm-hmm. But I was stunned to know that all I had to do was ask if you would mind. It was a very emotional scene. Yeah. And he said, I'd be happy to. Wow. So sometimes we all have to remember, <laughs> just ask and you will receive. That is amazing. So how was he to work with? Like very Jack Webb? Nice. Gentleman, very nice. Gentleman, huh? Very professional. 
Uh, yeah, very, very nice. Yeah. The, the list of stuff you've done is unbelievable. Burke's Raw? Burke's Law? Did I say Burke's right? Burke's Law. Burke's, Burke's Law. Law. Yes, indeed. And then it uh, goes on. Okay, I'm going to do this because <laughs> everybody's going to love you. Challenge of the Super Friends, Super Friends, the all-new Super Friends Hour, the world's greatest Super Friends, rival the Super Friends. The list goes on. Were you in Challenge of the Super Friends? Yes. You were. I That's was. my favorite. Challenge of the Super Friends. So yes. how did you do the voice when you were changed into like an evil version? Did you do the evil version of Wonder Woman? Well, there was one where you had red eyes. and Of course I did. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't take much for Wonder Woman to be evil. <laughs> no, but I, I want to go to this. And everybody's been emailing me and asking about this. Shannon, how did you get the role? And I know we I was in the panel with you, but nobody was there with us. How did you get the role of Wonder Woman? Did you expect to get it? Because you were an no. originally an actress, no, correct? No, I was, yes, I was an, an actress, actress, a working actress doing just fine, minding my own business. Okay. And I did a commercial for Flintstone Vitamins, which of course <laughs> is a Hanna-Barbera product. And the director, <laughs> whose name was Wally Burr, yeah. who recently died, Worked as my director on the commercial, and I really liked him very much. And all of a sudden, one day, my agent called and said, you have an audition at Hanna-Barbera for Wonder Woman. Well, I I said, what? Wonder Woman? Sure. And uh, they said, yep, go on over there. So I thought, wow. So I went over there, and the first thing I said to Wally at the audition was, hi, Wally. (laughs) How do you want me to do this person? What do you want me to do? And then what did he say? What did he, he say? said, well, the first thing you do is take off the shirtwaist dress and put on the boots. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you do? What did you do? Well, I just, I you know, she was mine. Nobody had ever done it that made any, you know, difference. One one woman did a, one, uh, one uh, episode of a cartoon Brady Bunch. Okay. And she did Wonder Woman. But I just said, "Okay, here goes," and this is how. That's how I saw her, and great Hera, I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you when you came up with the? Uh, okay, how do I do this? So we talked to. Uh, I talked to Shira. I talked to her, but they said they had this idea of where they wanted to go, what they wanted to do. When you walked in, was there a certain idea that you wanted to go with with Wonder Woman? Well, I, I mean, knew. you probably you probably went back and saw the. You looked at the comic well, books and stuff. Well, of course. Yeah. But then I was raised with the comic books. Okay. Wonder Woman was put on the market as a comic book the year I was born. Yeah. Yeah, that's The comic true. book came out. The comic book came out the year I was born. So, hey, was, I, those were the comic books when I was a little girl. Wow. So I just always saw her as this super woman yeah. who was equal to men. <laughs> That is beautiful. She just did different <laughs> tricks. <laughs> so, and then uh, recording sessions for the cartoons, how long would they usually take you? Well, we would all sit at the table and read it through, mm-hmm. looking at the storyboard first, being given... And you, you the, sat there with Casey Kasem? With all of us. Whenever we could, we were always together. Would he read and go, this is another dedication across <laughs> America? And he'd go, would he do that to you? No, no. <laughs> He was very much a serious oh, actor. If nobody knows, Casey Kasem was Robin on the Super That's Friends. Correct. Okay, go ahead. I'm so sorry. And we sat down at the table when we were parceled out our parts yeah. for the day. We all knew we would play our our main role. Yeah. But then we would play other roles that they needed played. And how many different ones do you usually they, do? They got three uh, three voices for every paycheck. So did you play any evil people in the female? Well, whenever that German scientist, little boy <laughs> baseball player. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that, that, oh, yeah. It, I didn't see that on your, uh, yep. your bio. That's because little boy they, baseball player. We need to get that on your bio. Well, that's because they have boy <laughs> baseball player on the credits. <laughs> All yeah. right, I'm sorry. I can continue right. on. So you guys would sit and around so the table. Then we would we would take a little break and yeah. stand up at, in the uh, studio with the mics mm-hmm. and work. We go to work. Yeah. So is it is it? Did they draw to your voice, or would you no. look at the animation? Because I know it's no. all changed today. They they storyboarded it first, yeah. so we saw our faces with the words. Then they do animate to our voice. Yeah. So the last product is animation. Oh, okay. Which is, rev- it's kind of weird. They pencil, they pencil in now on the computer and change the voice to your, that's just well, bizarre. Well, they can manipulate. Yeah. They, they manipulate. I believe the process is still the same. Is it really? I think so, because oh. your your 
production of the character, your acting of the character, gives an artist 